The diagnostic tool should only be used to troubleshoot a console that's having trouble downloading the system update from Xbox Live. Please exhaust all other troubleshooting before attempting this process, as the diagnostic tool is a very large file and this troubleshooting process will take a considerable amount of time to complete. Troubleshooting can be found on xbox.com support after searching for troubleshoot system updates on your Xbox One console. Before we get started, to perform the offline system update diagnostic tool, you'll need a USB flash drive formatted as NTFS with a minimum of 2 gigabytes of free space, and a PC with an internet connection, and a free USB port. If you are updating your system for the first time, you will still need to connect to the Xbox Live service. First, you'll need to know which OS version your console is currently running to download the correct system update. If after setting up your console and powering on for the first time, it gets stuck on the green boot screen for more than 10 minutes, please note that you will use OSU DT1 as your OS version in the upcoming steps to download the correct update. To find your Xbox One console's OS version, press the Xbox button on your controller to return home. Press the menu button and then select settings, or select settings on the home screen. Then select system, then select console info. Your OS version is the third row down. Please document this information so that you can select the correct download in the next step. Note, if you're in the process of setting up your system for the first time, or in the middle of a system update and need to find your OS version, pull both triggers and both bumpers on your controller. The OS version is listed as build and is the second line down. Now, on your computer, plug your NTFS formatted USB flash drive into a USB port. Format the USB drive as NTFS, and remember, it must have at least 2 gigabytes of free space. Then, open your web browser and go to www.xbox.com support, and then search on Offline System Update Diagnostic Tool, and click the Return Search link to find the corresponding file to your OS build. Scroll down the page, and you'll need to select the correct OSUDT file link based on your OS version to be able to install properly. Select the OSUDT file based on your current OS version that you documented in the earlier step to begin the download. This download is large, and it can take a considerable amount of time, and it can also vary depending on the maximum download speed of your internet service provider. When prompted, click Save to save the console update zip file to your computer. Unzip the file. If you're using Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8, double-click the zip file to unzip it. Then, simply copy the contents of the zip file to the root directory of your flash drive. Unplug the USB flash drive from your computer. Now, let's go to your console. First, unplug a network cable if you're using a wired network connection. Then, power off your console. And then unplug the power cord to ensure that the console is completely powered off. Now, we're going to wait for 30 seconds. Then, plug the power cord back in. Plug the flash drive into a USB port on the Xbox One console. And then next, we're going to press and hold the bind and eject buttons together on the console. And then press the Xbox button on the console to power it up. Continue holding the bind and eject buttons for 10 to 15 seconds. Listen for two power up tones a couple seconds apart. Note, if you don't hear two power up tones after 10 seconds, it means this failed. Likewise, if you hear any power down chirps, that also means this failed. You can release the bind and eject buttons after the second power up tone. When the console restarts, remove the USB drive. Once the console restarts, the update is complete and you should be returned to your experience. Note, the console restart may take several minutes. 
If you are using a wired connection, please plug your network cable back into the console. If you've never connected your console to the internet, you will need to connect at least once during your system setup process.